Hi right, YouTube, it's AC Dodd here again, and if you want to know how to set up your HI44 for initial settings, then you need to watch this video. Right YouTube, uh, this is an HI44 carburetor, and this is actually one of the carburetors um, that uh, uh, I rebuild. So this is a freshly built unit, and in fact, uh, for those of you who watched the previous video, uh, this is actually one that I put the... Uh, the bronze or the brass bushes in which I made for it. So this one's out now actually complete. Uh, the purpose of making this video was really uh, to let you guys know or to let people know who have got a rebuilt SU um, the initial settings or how to set the carburetor up so that when you install it on your A-series engine at least it will start and run because uh, there's lots of uh, information out there if you look for it that's a little bit um, misleading. So uh, what I'm going to try and do is attempt to show you how to uh, look over your carb and then give it some initial settings so that you can actually uh, use it and it will start on the engine. So the first thing you want to do with a carburetor is uh, remove the top. So here I'll remove the screws nice and gently with a screw or with a power screwdriver and the top comes out like so so initial settings first thing you want to do before you actually put it on um, is to actually see if there's any light coming around the uh, butterfly. So I'll put a torch inside and I'll change the lighting. And you can see, you can see the lighting around the uh, butterfly. Now, if that's sealed properly, you won't see any light around there. So the first thing you want to do before you put that together is to undo the or wind out the idle screw setting. Now with that butterfly close you can see that torch is still on but there's no light around that butterfly which means it's, it's been properly centered. One of the things that people um, don't do with these carbs when they rebuild them is center the butterfly in so it seals. As you can see, that one is sealed. So that leads us nicely onto the first settings. And on this case, it's the idle screw setting. So what setting do we use? Well, I simply wind that idle screw until it just touches the uh, butterfly. And you can see that by the throttle lever moving there. Yeah, it just starts. So you just find that point where it just touches and then you do one turn okay now that butterfly is set such and you can see the light there all right that's enough there for the engine to start the second thing we want to do is we need to understand our jet setting let's just put the light back on okay now the jet setting on these carburetors is that there. And what we need to do is first make sure, do it around the right way so you can see that, is make sure that that actually moves up, up and down correctly. Because not all carburetors when they've been built have been put together correctly and that jet should rise up and down. And it should rise up to the point where it's just above that's there, that's the highest point, and we wind the screw, you wind the screw in, the jet goes down. Alright, so what you're trying to find is the point at which that jet is level, or just below, the chamfer that's in that jet guide. Okay, I'll give you a proper picture in a minute. And the way we do that 
is you just turn the screw like so and I'll give you an example when it's too far you can see that there that jet is way below the chamfer in the jet guide so what we're going to do is we adjust that until it's just about on the bottom edge of that chamfer all right Let's see if I can give you a zoom in okay and we look through the rear orifice if we can see that yep yeah. That is just about the correct position. Don't worry about counting the turns and all this old rubbish and where it started from because the tolerances on these means they all start from a different position. Okay? So I always position mine on my carburetors when they're rebuilt in that position. And then what that allows is when you start that engine for the first time, that allows the engine to start. And then at the point of starting, once you control it on the throttle, you can then adjust that mixture screw to give you the um, the setting that you need. All right. Don't assume that when you get these carbs, they're actually correct out of the box. All right. Or the previous person who's played with it has actually set it right. If you set it in that position, it will it will start and run, and then you can adjust from there. The next setting you need to do is to adjust the fast idle which is that that screw there and basically there's a couple of ways of doing it but for those of you who want who like specific settings um, a good rule of thumb is to use a feeler blade and what you want to do is insert a feeler blade between the throttle stop and the screw the one we've just adjusted and then what you want to do with that feeler blade and that's 18 thou is you turn that round the choke round until the arrow just points in line with the fast idle screw which is there okay as you can see that's a little bit past all right so i'm going to use a um, seven mil spanner and i'm going to wind that out a couple of flats okay until it's just in line all right and that arrow points in line with that screw and that is the correct setting and we can take that out when we're done and with that fast idle setting again that's only the, the initial setting we actually put it on the car we run the engine and then we set that screw to give us the appropriate opening of the throttle um, when we engage the choke at the fast idle position to give us the rev rise that we're looking for and that's dependent on the specification of the engine and how it needs to run but typically it's anywhere between about 1200 and 1450 rpm while i'm here i'll just give you a, a quick once over of uh, some of the uh, modifications that you get on an ac dodd um, fast road su uh, of which this is an example of uh, one of the things that's done on these is, as you can see there, there's a screw there and uh, the vacuum port has been relocated. And that is to change this carburetor uh, from what they call manifold vacuum to ported vacuum, which basically um, reduces the ignition uh, vacuum advance idle, which gives uh, much lower emissions and also a smoother idle. Um, but also, when you open the throttle, as you can see there, that butterfly basically uncovers the vacuum hole so that when you're driving you get vacuum advance which gives you the nice efficient running at part throttle which is what you need one of the other things these carburetors feature although you can't see it here is the these all use the latest um, throttle shaft seals and these are actually done uh, to um, minimize the uh, leaks on the throttle shaft so even if there is wear after a period of time the shaft seal in there is a full seal and uh, you know uh, maintains the proper uh, seal on the shaft to prevent air leaks uh, getting into the engine when it's running 
So I retrofit that on all my uh, uh, HIF carbs uh, when I rebuilt as, as standard. One of the more obvious uh, features as well is um, the throttle butterfly. Uh, if they're fitted with the, uh, the overrun valve with the great big spring loaded um, uh, poppet uh, valve that's in there, uh, all the rebuilt ones I do, I omit that. Uh, so I'll give you a nice plain throttle disc. One of the other things uh, to check actually when you're doing these carburetors is um, when you're rebuilding them make sure that you set the float height so these carburetors actually need the float height setting uh, which is inside there. I'm not going to show you on this one because this is already uh, built but it's, uh, it's always um, shown in manuals etc on how to rebuild these. Now taking the dash pot these look pretty uh, similar and, and to be fair uh, they are pretty similar but they do vary in the type of oil etc that you need to actually make uh, these carburetors work properly. So uh, in this video I'm just going to basically tell you that um, these carburetors do not all take the same oil. So in order to make these work properly for your application uh, it will need tuning and that means someone who knows how to set these up and choose the correct oil and the correct spring and needle for them um, to get the engine to run properly will need to be done. So it's not just a case of uh, looking in a book for the appropriate um, you know, spring, needle and oil combination and, and then putting that in. They need to be done uh, you know, while they're on the engine to actually get any kind of uh, sensible drivability from them. Okay, so if we just show you the uh, one of the other modifications I do to these is I uh, modify that damper to the fast drop type. So basically when that's in and operating, you should have a, some sort of a restriction on there, depending on what you need for your engine. And then more importantly, when you let that go, that needs to come down uh, very quickly. It's a common problem on these carburetors, especially when these carbs are taken from the mundane cars like some of the standard metros and things that were about for the return on these to be very very slow that causes a problem uh, when you're accelerating and when you change gear uh, you accelerate hard in third and then when you change gear the piston doesn't come down far enough so actually what happens by the time you engage uh, the next gear there's a huge flat spot um, so that's a good indication that you need a fast drop damper so the part number for that is an LZX 2085 or you can modify your existing one Okay, one of the other issues that you find with these carburetors is when people um, build them, unfortunately, they uh, don't always put the needle in in the right place. And sometimes that can be because the actual, uh, you know, needle holder, uh, which is there, isn't, uh, is worn and won't go in the right place when you tighten the screw. Uh, in this case, when you actually put the needle in, that needle guide needs to be flush with the bottom, okay? So, for example, if I loosen that and I'll let it sit there, I've seen carburetors come to me with the guide like that. That is not going to run properly. Conversely, I've also seen them when they're inside. Okay? So that there, where that's inside, is not in the uh, correct place either. Always start in a position where you position that and it's flush with the end. And then you won't have any problems with at least starting the engine and getting initial settings. Now I get a lot of people asking me about what needles and what settings and everything else that you want for carburetors. Um, if you're asking me that question, it's clearly, clearly you don't know the answer and you don't know how to do it. The problem with a carburetor is uh, it's not as easy as just recommending a needle. Those carburetors um, can be fitted on the same engine um, and two different carbs will need two different needles to fuel it properly. Uh, uh, likewise, you could put the same carb on two engines of the same spec and because of the, uh, you know, the differences in the way the, uh, the engines are, even though they're producing similar power, they will require different needles in the same carburetor uh, to to achieve the, the the same fueling, so the only way that these carburetors can be set up properly 
um, really is to be able to measure the uh, engine while it's running and measure the exhaust output and then modify the needles to suit. Um, and in my case, I do obviously custom needles, etc. Um, and uh, it's perfectly possible to have an engine with no flat spots uh, and runs perfectly on part throttle. And when you put your foot down, uh, the engine will respond smoothly um, and obviously uh, fuel, the fuel the engine uh, as it's needed and, and perform excellently. One of the other issues that you get is, uh, you know, people go, oh, it's got flat spots, etc. Well, an engine, if it's got too much camshaft, for example, won't pull very well at low revs. So there's no amount of tuning that will get rid of that uh, when you've potentially over cammed your engine. So uh, in, in a normal road application where you've got your uh, normal carburetor with a sensible road cam, then perfect part throttle fueling and transition and to full power fueling uh, is actually possible. But that usually means uh, a custom needle in my experience. Well, I hope you found that video useful. Uh, as ever, like and subscribe if you want to see more content. Thank you very much.